Want a small crossover or a little lifestyle SUV? Well, a lot of people do. And here's Vauxhall's take on the genre, the Mocha X. Now, since its original launch in 2013, the Mocha has been a successful model for the Griffin brand, uh, notching up more than half a million sales, over a quarter of these in the UK. In fact, it's been the company's most successful SUV since the Frontera of the early 90s. In between, Vauxhall either ignored this segment completely or delivered large, clunky models that the market didn't want, like the Monterey and the Antara. The Mocha, though, showed that General Motors could get it right and that it was listening to its customers. In its early form, uh, this model had to represent its brand virtually single-handedly in the quickly growing crossover segment, which perhaps explains why it was so popular. Between 2013 and 2016, if you wandered into a Vauxhall showroom and you wanted a small Duke-sized crossover or a slightly larger Qashqai class model, uh, the dealership had very little else that would have interested you. Things have changed since then, of course, and in its rejuvenated Mocha X guys, this car is these days the entry point to a Vauxhall crossover and SUV lineup that now includes two larger models, the mid-sized Crossland X and the large Grandland X. So, does this improved Mocha have the X factor necessary to sustain that promising early sales performance? This X version was launched in the autumn of 2016 and features smarter looks, an upgraded interior and Vauxhall's clever OnStar personal connectivity and service assistance setup. Buyers also get a much improved IntelliLink infotainment media connectivity system, a fresh 1.4 litre petrol engine option. Will it all be enough though to keep this car competitive? Let's go and find out. Plenty of changes have been made in the creation of this rejuvenated Mocha X model, but few of them have much to do with engineering or driving dynamics. Now that probably won't bother many prospective buyers. Uh, these are people who are likely to be enthusiasts for life rather than for cars. And that'll be part of the reason that they're considering a crossover like this in the first place, rather than a conventional super mini or family hatch. They'll like the high set seating position, uh, the trendy Sloan Street styling, and the optional possibility of off-road shenanigans. All these things remain present and correct in this improved Mocha. As before, it isn't an especially rewarding car to drive. Uh, the extra weight and the higher stance of the crossover genre count against it here. But then, if you come to almost any car in this class expecting fun at the wheel, well, the truth is you're probably going to be a bit disappointed. In this one, the steering is light, quick and accurate, but predictably it doesn't offer much feedback. Uh, it's probably just as well that this discourages you from pushing too hard through tighter bends at speed, because when you do engage in driving of that sort, this Vauxhall feels distinctly out of its comfort zone. Despite the firm suspension, it certainly rolls quite a lot more than drivers coming from super minis or family hatches will be used to. Still, come on. I mean, nobody buys a car of this kind and drives it like a hot hatch. The high stance that uh, necessitates the firm damping and provokes that body roll is the thing that gives you this lovely raised seating position, something you'll particularly appreciate when you're uh, urban driving. Uh, that's when you'll also thank Vauxhall for the lightness of the steering, which is perfectly weighted for the challenges of town terrain. When it comes to Mocha engine options, well, our basic advice is to ignore the entry-level petrol and diesel units if you possibly can. The base 115 PS 1.6 litre petrol variant uh, being particularly worth a swerve. Uh, the marginal price saving this derivative offers over the preferable 1.4 litre petrol turbo version will quickly evaporate with this old tech power plant's higher running costs. Plus, there's just 155 newton metres of torque, which means you'll have to make frequent use of the stick shift gearbox the only one in the range not fitted with a sixth speed. For the record, uh, rest to 60 miles an hour in this base derivative takes 11.8 seconds en route to just 106 miles an hour. These are figures that the 140 PS 1.4 litre turbo easily improves to 9.3 seconds and 122 miles an hour. Plus, with that 1.4 litre variant, you get the option of either automatic transmission or four-wheel drive. 
Should you happen to want both of those things in a petrol-powered Mokka X, you'll be adding quite a lot to this model's already quite hefty weight, so it's probably just as well that Vauxhall only offers such a combination in concert with an uprated 152 PS version of the 1.4-litre turbo engine, the only fresh engine option available as part of the revised range. Here, the performance figures are 9.4 seconds and 120 miles an hour. A large proportion of Mokka X buyers, though, are going to be wanting a diesel. Now, there are two options, the single 1.6-litre CDTI unit on offer being either available with 110 PS or, as in this case, with 136 PS. Either way, you get an engine that's known in Vauxhall circles as the Whisper diesel because one of the main aims with this motor was to make it as refined as possible. Broadly, this objective has been achieved, uh, this now being one of the quieter diesel power plants in the segment and representing a big step step forward from the raucous 1.7 litre CDTI unit that this Mokka was originally launched with. We can't really see why you choose the base 110 PS version of this motor, given that the price saving over the Pokia power plant is marginal and the efficiency benefits are equally slight. The 136 PS model we're trying here is also usefully more rapid than the base variant, improving the rest to 60 miles an hour time from 11.5 seconds to 9.3 seconds on the top speed from 112 to 118 miles an hour. Plus, the Pokia diesel is the one that you have to have if we want the option of either auto transmission or four-wheel drive. Mokka X diesel buyers can only get one or the other. We should say a bit more about all-wheel drive since it's a very strong Mokka X sales point. Now, let's say you require 4x4 traction from a car of this kind because you live in a rural area or because you regularly commute into the country. Or perhaps you occasionally need to tug along something like a small caravan. A diesel Mokka can, after all, tow a brake trailer of up to 1,200 kilos in weight. It won't take too much research to establish that most Super Mini-based small crossovers don't offer all-wheel traction at all, and the few that do limit it to pricier variants that will cost even more if they're equipped to this Vauxhall standard. So it all means that um, unless you're prepared to go with a model in this sector from a bargain brand, uh, say a Sanyong Tivoli or a Dacia Duster, well, you could well end up deciding that in the search for a sensibly priced 4x4 compact crossover, this Mokka really is your best bet. So what do you get if that is the case? Well, as you might expect, the all-wheel drive system provided on this car is a simple one, one of those fully adaptive setups that react to the surface you're driving over. So there are no knobs and levers, just a set of sensors that constantly monitor things like your steering angle, uh, the wheel speeds, the throttle pedal position, and the engine revs. Uh, based on all this data, the electronic torque transfer device that controls the whole system will always know when extra traction is required, at which point it will automatically and seamlessly send up to 50% of the engine's torque from the front to the rear axle. Now that's particularly useful during mild off-road use, of course, during which you may also have the opportunity to appreciate the benefits of an ESP stability control system that's clever than most. Uh, built into it is a hill start assist feature to get you up steep slopes uh, from which you can descend using hill descent control technology that will keep the car at a constant speed as you slither to the bottom. Thanks to the rather restricted ride height of this car, uh, 157 millimetres, we can't imagine too many Mokka X owners putting this technology to the test. Uh, many more, though, may find themselves appreciating the all-wheel drive system's advantages on tarmac during cornering at higher speeds, given that it can be activated to prevent wheel slip in just a fraction of a second. So, does this Mokka have that extra X factor? Well, it's certainly a less apologetic looking thing than before. The more aggressive front end, giving this revised design a sense of spirit and purpose that the original model lacked. In short, British designer Mark Adams and his team have breathed fresh life into this little crossover. So, how have they done it? Well, here at the front, the headlamps are meaner and they feature smart LED daytime running light strips that form a style line flowing into the slim chrome bar that decorates this redesigned front grille. Uh, the bumper's been completely restyled too and incorporates these much smarter fog lamps. Below that, an alloy effect protective front skid plate aims to add some SUV attitude. 
From the side, you get a better perspective of the size of this model. Now, don't believe magazines that tell you it's a Qashqai or, say, it's Attica competitor. Uh, those are crossovers that are based on Focus or Astra-style family hatchback underpinnings, and Vauxhall has its Crossland X model to take them on. Uh, the Mocha, in contrast, is based on a modified Corsa Super Mini platform, which is why it's around 100 millimeters shorter than a Qashqai or an Attica. It is a useful 140 to 150 mils longer than direct rivals like Nissan's Duke and Renault's Capture, though, and that creates cabin space that, as we'll see, makes this Mocha a much better bet than competitors like those if you're looking for, say, a second family car. As for the profile changes made to this Mocha X, uh, well, there aren't many. In fact, apart from the body-coloured door mirrors and the smarter 17 or 18-inch alloy wheels, the side styling of this car remains exactly as it was before, although that's no bad thing. Uh, you get the same chunky, purposeful stance with crossover credentials emphasised by these silver-trimmed roof bars, uh, the dark wheel arch extensions and the black plastic cladding that runs along the bottom of the doors. Uh, top spec versions get these chrome side window trims and this dark tinted rig glass. At the rear, the enhancements are equally subtle, these restyled lamp clusters being the most obvious difference. Those who are familiar with the original version of this car, who look a little more closely, might notice a few small changes further down too. Uh, the fog lamps that are built into the top of the bumper have been elongated to give the impression of a wider stance. And this rear skid plate panel now has a smoother, smarter finish. Time to take a seat inside. Now it's extremely unusual to find a completely new dashboard design as part of a mid-term facelift, but that is exactly what's been delivered here. Uh, the original model had a complicated centre stack peppered by fiddly little buttons uh, with a small colour screen sprouting out of the fascia top. This time around, the cabin stylists have done a much better job uh, and that sees the infotainment monitor relocated to the centre of the dash where it's become more sophisticated, uh, gaining things like pinch and swipe technology. This IntelliLink display is larger than the previous one too, uh, 7 inches in size in standard form or 8 inches if you have it with navigation. Further down, the number of buttons needed has been considerably reduced too, quite a number of functions having been transferred into the touchscreen, although not thankfully the ventilation controls. This improved IntelliLink setup also has the advantage of being compatible with the latest Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. Use this projection screen option and via this technology, you'll be able to duplicate the functionality of your smartphone onto the facial monitor. As for more familiar infotainment features, uh, well, you'll be able to use the usual Bluetooth phone, uh, DAB stereo and informational features on here too. And of course, there's SatNav if you specified it. Although it might be tempting not to pay extra for that, given this setup's uh, capacity for downloading a whole range of different apps, including navigational ones. Having SatNav though will be uh, quite a major advantage when it comes to use of the other key piece of standard technology that's available with this car. That's the OnStar personal connectivity and service assistant. So what on earth is that? Well, let me show you. You see this blue button above the windscreen by the rear view mirror. Well, let's assume you need to know something on your journey. Uh, maybe, for example, the kids are hungry and you're wondering how far it might be to the nearest McDonald's. Well, the answer is just to click away. Can you tell me where the nearest McDonald's is, please? If your Mocha X has been fitted with SatNav, then the operator can simply download the details directly onto the screen. It's as simple as that. Uh, even if navigation hasn't been specified, though, the OnStar package remains a strong selling point, especially when it comes to more serious journeying issues. Let's say your daughter's borrowed the car, then got a puncture on a desolate, deserted stretch of road. Understandably, she'd be scared and worried, but she doesn't need to be. She's only got to push this blue button and the OnStar operator will take over, alerting the rescue services and, if necessary, staying with her until they arrive. Uh, let's take an even worse scenario, though. Let's say you've had an accident and you're incapacitated. Well, the OnStar system will have been alerted on activation of the airbags, so in seconds, help will be speeding to your exact GPS location. 
Other functions of the OnStar package include the way it can turn your Mocha X into a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot that boosts your phone signal and which can function with up to seven devices. So there'll be no arguing there in the back. Plus the package includes a vehicle tracking device that can automatically disable the car if someone steals it and then pinpoint its location. Should such a theft take place, uh, you simply contact OnStar using a downloadable MyVoxel smartphone app that if necessary you can also use to access important vehicle data and remotely lock or unlock your car. Enough with connectivity. What else do you need to know about this cabin? Uh, well, it looks pretty smart thanks to the satin finish switches and this attractive stitched trim panel in front of the passenger that flows down beneath the screen in the centre stack. Uh, getting comfortable is easy, especially if you have an elite model like this one, which as standard gets specially designed leather trimmed ergonomic front seats that have been certified by the Campaign for Healthier Backs. Uh, the three-spoke multifunction leather stitch steering wheel that these position you in front of is pretty much as before, but through it you view a revised instrument binnacle. The uh, previous model's rather old-fashioned red backlit display replaced here by a classier black and white themed layout, and it's got a wider, easier to view information screen between these two main dials. I do find it uh, a little irritating though that Vauxhall insists on only designating the speedometer in 20 miles an hour increments, which means that you miss out on the important 30 and 70 miles an hour markers. Are there other issues? Uh, well, not too many. The, the silver button on top of the handbrake can be a bit fiddly to use, and over the shoulder vision isn't great because the back window's small and the rear pillars are quite thick, so it's fortunate that parking sensors are standard across the range. Otherwise though, all round visibility is pretty good, aided by the higher set driving position and these comparatively slim front pillars that give you a good view to the side when you're approaching roundabouts and junctions. Uh, so I'll finish by covering the cabin stowage options. Uh, there are apparently no fewer than 19 storage areas dotted all around the interior, although they don't include an overhead uh, storage compartment for your sunglasses. As for what you do get, well, um, this lidded cubby in front of the gear stick is nicely finished, as is the storage area behind the handbrake with its louvered top. Uh, there are twin cup holders between the seats, plus you get these narrow door bins. So let's take a seat in the rear. As we mentioned earlier, this is where you discover that the Mocha isn't quite large enough to be the Qashqai or Sayat Attic arrival that the magazines promise. By the standards of models in the smaller crossover segment though, we think it's one of the better choices you could make if you have uh, a family with, say, teenage children. Now that's because there's surprisingly decent headroom back here. And although taller adults will struggle for legroom, averagely sized folks should be able to get reasonably comfortable, despite the fact that these uh, seats don't slide or recline. Inevitably, getting three people back here would be a bit of a squash, but a trio of smaller kids should be able to fit in without starting World War III between them. It'll help that there's a decent view out from back here, despite this upswept window line. Plus, Vauxhall's provided ice picks child seat mounts for the outer chairs, and the high roof line means that it'll be easier for parents to reach in with child seats and use them than it would be in a conventional super mini or family hatch. Top trim levels provide this centre armrest with twin integral cup holders. Let's take a look out back, lift the tailgate and you'll find that there's no high boot lip preventing you from easily accessing the 356 litres of provided carriage space. Uh, to give you some class perspective, that is about the same as you get in class rivals like Nissan's Duke, uh, Kia's Soul and Fiat's 500X, but it's a little bit less than you find in comparable models like Renault's Capture and Peugeot's 2008. Uh, the load compartment is well sized, it's flat with straight sides, while a storage compartment in the side keeps smaller items from rattling around. Uh, four bag hooks moulded into the side panels keep your shopping bags from spilling their contents while a quartet of securing hooks let you tie down larger items. There's also a large hidden compartment under the carpet to store valuables, although that space is only there because annoyingly the Mocha X doesn't come with a spare wheel as standard.
If you need more space, then there's the irritating need to have to pull up the back seat bases if you're to completely flatten the split folding rear bench. Uh, once you have though, there's uh, 1.5 meters of load bay length around about to freed up, although there's no folding front passenger seat option that would further extend that. Uh, the total seats folded capacity is 1,372 liters, which is one of the best figures on offer in the class. Vauxhall has never priced this mocker model to compete amongst the very cheapest models in the small crossover segment, and it still doesn't. Now, the brand points out rightly that this is a slightly larger car than, say, a Nissan Duke, and that helps to explain pricing that starts at just under £18,000 and ranges up to around £27,000 across four different trim levels. Now, if you're tempted by that entry-level figure, bear in mind that it only gets you the 1.6-litre, 115 PS petrol engine that you'd ideally want to avoid. Now, if you are buying on a budget and you want a Mocha X, then try to find the extra £700 that's necessary to graduate up to 1.4-litre, 140 PS petrol turbo engine that's not only faster and more satisfying to use, but also significantly cheaper to run. Find a minimum of around £18,500 for this petrol power plant and you also get lots of mechanical options too. For example, around £900 more gets you automatic transmission, while for around £1,600 more you can have all-wheel drive. Now if you want both the auto box and all-wheel traction, then you have to have the newly introduced uprated 152 PS version of that 1.4 litre turbo engine. And by that time, well, the minimum you'll be paying will be well over £21,000. Now, of course, many prospective Mocha X buyers will be wanting a diesel, and for that, you'll be needing a minimum budget of around £20,000. Black pump fuel versions of this car all use a 1.6 litre CDTI engine offered with either 110 PS or it's here with 136 PS. Even for the least powerful unit and the most basic level of trim, you'll need a budget of around 20,000 pounds. Not that we can see why you would buy the least powerful 110 PS model, given that for only 350 pounds more, this 136 PS variant is almost as efficient and significantly quicker. Both 1.6 litre diesels come either in standard form with 18 inch wheels or for the same price in EcoFlex guys with 17 inch wheels. So make sure you know what you're buying. You'll also need to know that all 110 PS diesel models are front driven, but if you do go for this 136 PS variant, then there's the option to pay around £1,000 more for an auto gearbox or around £1,800 more for all wheel drive. On the CDTI, you can only have one or the other. So, having guided you through the Mocha X range, we also need to give you some pointers regarding its value proposition. Now, in its original form, this car spent most of its life trying to appeal to both the segments of the compact crossover sector, uh, namely that for small Duke-sized models based on Corsa-sized super minis, and that for a slightly larger family-sized Qashqai class contenders that are based on Astra-sized family hatches. Uh, now that Vauxhall has its Crossland X model to more specifically target the Qashqai class, this mocker is free to focus on the smaller sector, although it does continue to compete at the more expensive end end of its chosen class. Look at what Vauxhall is asking for this car and you'll find it's around a thousand to two and a half thousand pounds more expensive than equivalent versions of small crossovers like Nissan's Duke, uh, Renault's Capture, Ford's Echo Sport, Suzuki's Vitara, Citroen C4 Cactus and Peugeot's 2008. Bear in mind though that the deals you're likely to get from your local Vauxhall franchise will probably narrow that gap. Uh, more closely matched in terms of list pricing to this Mocha X are comparable compact crossovers like Skoda's Yeti, uh, Fiat's 500X, Mitsubishi's ASX and Mazda CX-3. While similarly sized models in this segment like Honda's HRV and Jeep's Renegade could end up costing you significantly more. So why would you buy this Vauxhall in preference to the rivals I just mentioned? Well, it's possible to think of several reasons why you might. We've already mentioned that you're more likely to be offered a really attractive deal on this car than you will be with most rivals. But even if that's not the case, then the standard inclusion on all Mocha X variants of the OnStar Personal Connectivity and Service Assistant package would for us be a powerful incentive to purchase. Uh, once you've used this OnStar package, you'll really wonder how you ever managed without it. Uh, you'll never be stranded after a breakdown or an accident, and almost anything that you might ever need to know about any journey that you'll ever take will be just a button press away.
Uh, the OnStar package also allows you to create in the car a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. Plus, there's a smartphone app that can remotely lock or unlock the doors. It can check your oil life, or if you lost the Vauxhall in a busy car park, it can sound the horn or flash the lights. Plus, if your Mocha X is stolen, OnStar can disable it so it can't be started. So, in summary, no other rival has a system that can match the range of services that OnStar has to offer. Another reason why you might choose a Mocha X lies in the fact that it's actually very well equipped. As is often the case with Vauxhall, there's a confusing trim structure hierarchy that sees the base option, Active, being priced around £2,000 above the next level up, Design Nav. Now that's because Active Spec is aimed at private buyers and Vauxhall wants to give its dealers some added room for discounting, uh, for special finance deals or 0% offers. Now these would have to be quite lucrative to cover the price difference between those two variants and the fact that the cheaper Design Nav derivative is additionally fitted with a navigation system to complete the functionality of that OnStar package that I just mentioned. Either way, you'll get an IntelliLink infotainment system that uh, also includes a six-speaker DAB audio setup, uh, Bluetooth phone connectivity and smartphone projection via either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. All of this works via a color center dash IntelliLink screen that's seven inches in size when navigation isn't fitted or eight inches when it is. Uh, either way, as you'd expect, there's also the convenience of a USB connection and an aux in socket. Other standard features fitted across the range include front fog lights, uh, silver effect roof rails, an alloy effect protective front skid plate, uh, tinted windows and alloy wheels, 17 inches on the Ecoflex or 18 inches if you go for one of the other variants. Avoid the base 1.6 litre petrol unit and you get a stainless steel exhaust tailpipe too. Other welcome features include auto headlamps and wipers, uh, LED daytime running lights, power folding uh, electric heated mirrors, front and rear parking sensors and an alarm. Inside there's cruise control with a useful speed limiter, an anti-dazzle rear view mirror, a multifunction trip computer, dual zone electronic climate control and a high beam assist system that will automatically dip your headlights for you at night in the face of oncoming traffic. So overall, it's an impressive standard tally that most rivals can only match with more expensive trim options. If you want to go further, you'll want an elite variant like the one we have in this case. Our models with this top level of trim are marked out by chrome effect trim for the uh, dark tinted rear windows. Plus, if you haven't opted for an Ecoflex variant, then your 18 inch wheels will be of a classier multi-spoke style. Inside, elite customers get leather upholstery and ergonomic front seats that have been certified by the Campaign for Healthier Backs. These chairs are heated, as is a steering wheel, whilst in the back there's a centre armrest with uh, uh, integrated cup holders. If you want navigation, then an additional Elite Nav trim level provides it. So, that's the standard list of what you get with a Mocha X. What about options and extras that you might want to add? Well, starting with the exterior, you could choose a rear view camera to augment the parking sensors. Uh, more technology is provided by Vauxhall's premium LED adaptive forward lighting system. Now this uses six LED elements to deliver 30% brighter illumination at night and it can provide a beam that not only turns with the bends but can also adapt itself to better light up either country or urban environments. Uh, what else? Well, side steps and a sliding glass sunroof could be of interest. Uh, as for aesthetics, you could add a roof spoiler, plus there's a range of 10 optional paint colours and a selection of 18 and 19 inch alloy wheels. A full body styling package is an option, as is a decal styling kit. And for the interior of your Mocha X, well, as you'd expect, navigation is an option for customers choosing entry-level active trim. While if you haven't been able to stretch to this elite variant, you might want to tick the box for the winter pack that provides heat for the front seats and the steering wheel. Uh, if you have gone for this elite model, then you can brighten the otherwise, well, rather sombre interior by taking up the no-cost option of having the leather upholstery in a lighter brandy jasmine finish rather than this standard black. Uh, there are optional privacy shades for the rear side windows. Plus, you could keep the kids quiet with two Flex Connect features that fit onto the front seat backs, a folding table and a tablet holder. And in all versions, uh, things like piano black interior trim strips and shiny door sill plates can be added to give the cabin a smarter feel. 
As for practical touches, uh, well, in the boot, an optional hard cargo tray protects the carpet when you load up with things like muddy boots or kids' bikes. Or you could go for a cargo liner, various cargo nets or a load compartment mat. Uh, various carriers to take things like cycles, skis, snowboards and surfboards can be attached to these roof bars, as can a roof box. Uh, you might also want a tow bar, perhaps even one can be used to mount a bike carrier. We'd also want to specify the optional full-size spare wheel that you can ask your dealer about. On to safety. Every Mocha X model comes with twin front side and full length curtain airbags. Uh, there's also tyre pressure monitoring and Isofix child seat mounts fitted to the outer two rear seats. A Vauxhall says that pedestrian safety is enhanced by a collapsible windscreen wiper system and a special upper and lower bumper design. On to electronic stuff. Now, because this is a relatively old design, it hasn't been engineered to take the latest generation of radar-driven driving aids, uh, things like autonomous braking and lane departure warning systems. Still, if you can do without all that, then you'll find that most of the boxes for more conventional electronic features do appear to have been ticked. Uh, now, we've already mentioned the high beam assist system and touched on the fact that the uh, standard OnStar system will automatically alert the emergency services in the event of an accident and they'll give them your exact GPS location. So, in addition, all Mocha X models get ESP stability control and ABS brakes with emergency brake assist for panic stops and those will be advertised to following motorists by flashing adaptive brake lights. Uh, cornering brake control provides extra stability through the turns. Uh, every Mocha X also comes with hill start assist to prevent the car from rolling backwards when you're pulling away on an incline. And four-wheel drive versions get a descent control system to stop the car from going too quickly down slippery slopes. This mocker is one of Vauxhall's older designs, something that's most evident when you look at the curb weight, a figure that hovers either just above or just below the 1.4 tonne mark, depending on the variant you're looking at. Now that is quite a lot for a small crossover of this size. A uh, similarly sized rival Peugeot 2008, for example, is around 300 kilos lighter. Given that starting point, Vauxhall's done pretty well to make this car's running costs relatively efficient by class standards, or at least they are in diesel form. Go for a front-driven diesel Mocha X and you'll be offered the no-cost option of an EcoFlex derivative. Now, all that basically means is that the variant in question will be fitted with 17-inch alloy wheels rather than 18-inch rims. The 17 inches make a small but possibly significant difference to running cost efficiency, improving the combined fuel economy figure by around 2 miles per gallon and shaving around 2 grams per kilometre from the CO2 emissions reading. To be specific, a Mocha X 1.6 CDTI 110 PS EcoFlex manages 72.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 103 grams per kilometre of CO2. Stay with the EcoFlex 17-inch wheels and go for the Pokia 138 PS version of this engine and the readings fall only slightly to 68.9 miles per gallon, 106 grams per kilometre. To give you some perspective, those are the same kinds of figures you'll get from a smaller, more cramped Nissan Juke DCI 110 and they better the returns you get from rivals like Skoda's Yeti or Ford's EcoSport. Obviously, adding in things like auto transmission and all-wheel drive has an impact on these readings. Go for the 1.6-litre CDTI 136 PS Mocha X with all-wheel drive and the figures fall to 60.1 mpg and 124 grams per kilometre. There's a huge penalty to pay if you saddle the same engine with an automatic gearbox, the figures falling to 56.5 mpg and 132 grams per kilometre. When it comes to petrol power, the Mocha X struggles a little more to meet the prevailing class standard. Uh, we particularly counsel you to try and avoid the entry-level 115 PS 1.6 litre engine, an old tech unit which is markedly less economic than the next power plant up in the range, the more powerful 140 PS 1.4 litre petrol turbo, itself not a paragon of efficiency. In the 1.6, expect 42.2 mpg on the combined cycle and 155 grams per kilometre, while in the 1.4 turbo, the figures improved to 47.1 mpg and 140 grams per kilometre. 
Some comparably quick petrol rivals can improve on these figures by as much as 30%. A 1.4 litre 140 PS petrol turbo model with all-wheel drive manages 43.5 mpg and 152 grams per kilometre, while a front-driven mocker with the same engine mated to automatic transmission manages 43.5 mpg and 149 grams per kilometre. Now, as you may have heard us mention in the driving experience section, there's also a Pokia 152 PS version of that same 1.4 litre engine that comes complete with auto transmission and all wheel drive. And that's a variant that returns 43.5 mpg and 150 grams per kilometre. Every model in the range with a manual gearbox comes with start stop as standard, uh, one of those systems that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. As for those variants with four wheel drive, well, remember that this system is not permanently engaged, so it helps to save fuel and emissions by only coming into play when the car senses a loss of grip at the front wheels and sends power to the back axle to maintain traction. Enough though with the fuel and CO2 stats, what about other ownership considerations? Well, you can keep an eye on your efficiency efforts via the Eco section of the Instrument Binnacle Trip Computer, which includes an Eco Index that rates the frugality of your driving and an economy trend screen that graphically shows your recent fuel consumption. What else? Um, well, you might not expect that residual values would be anything to write home about with a volume Vauxhall, but here a pleasant surprise awaits prospective owners. Independent experts reckon that after three years and 30,000 miles of use, a 1.6 litre CDTI diesel variant like the one we're trying here will hold on to 45% of its original asking price. That's a strong showing by uh, segment standards. That's one reason why leasing deals on this car are so relatively affordable. You'll also need to know that Vauxhall includes a three-year, 60,000-mile warranty as standard, and that's a package that can be extended up to five years and 100,000 miles at extra cost. A year's free breakdown cupboard is also provided, uh, along with a six-year anti-corrosion guarantee. Service intervals are every 20,000 miles or every 12 months, depending on which comes around sooner, and you can opt for a service plan that lets you pay monthly to spread the cost of regular work to the car. As part of this, uh, Vauxhall offers discounts on wear and tear items like brake pads and windscreen wipers. And finally, you'll need to know about insurance. Uh, the lowest rating for a Mocha X is Group 7E or 8E for the 1.6 litre petrol model. Move to the 1.4 litre turbo petrol engine and you'll find front driven versions in Group 13E and 14E, while 4x4 models are rated in Group 13E. As for the 1.6 litre CDTI diesels, the 110 PS models are in Groups 12E and 13E, while the 136 PS variants are in Groups 14E and 15E. Not too long ago, it was hard to think of a more conventional brand than Vauxhall, but that was then. Here's how the company is thinking now. Looks a lot more appealing, doesn't it? True, this Mocha X isn't the sharpest handling car of its kind, but for likely buyers, it's probably as good as it needs to be. Nor is it as affordable as some might expect, but that's only an issue if you look at list pricing and forget everything else, like the fact that Vauxhall dealers have more scope for negotiation than most other brands, and the fact that rival models will need plenty of extra spend if they're to match this Mocha's standard of equipment. Something that competitors can't match is this car's clever OnStar personal connectivity and service assistant package. And we're all well used to media connectivity on modern cars, uh, but this setup uh, takes that whole concept one stage further. Conventional navigation systems are, after all, only any good if you know where you want to go. What happens if you don't? Uh, say you're driving along and you need a restaurant or a fuel station just off route or if you're entering a city and you need to find a car park or a train station. OnStar deals with all these scenarios, as well as covering you for breakdown, accident, theft, and vehicle diagnostics. We think it's a great tool to have. And in summary, well, overall, we think that Vauxhall's done just about enough with this mid-term mocker update. The looks are smarter, the cabin's classier, and the infotainment features are now class leading. Plus, unlike most of its segment rivals, this model offers four-wheel drive as an affordable option. This is, in short, a car with an appeal that builds as your interest in it grows. 
the kind of car Vauxhall needs to make for a more fashionable future.